where where did we use as many to, the challenge was what as many and uh, many to many relationship did we do that can you give me an example friends right mm -hmm. so challenges in this homework uh, friendship association and then maybe messages uh, incoming outgoing or, or maybe send receive messages and then blocking people right any other thing so how did you handle the uh, oh where is my okay how did you handle the friendship stuff do most of you do the uh, the screencast one Yeah, so how do we do it in here? Class. So you have a user. And then how do you do friendship? Like that. So this friendship belongs to user. And then what? And then you have friend ID, but then this is class name user is it a two-way or one-way relationship how do you make it two ways this is what has many friends through Friendship, right? Yeah. Okay. Is this clear to you guys? And this, the, the naming is a bit funny. User here means I'm the person who friend. Right? I'm a, uh, a person who stopped the friendship. And then friend here means you are the person I friend. So this is a one-way relationship. And if you keep it this way, it's what? It's okay and, and probably convenient to work with. How uh, we just say you want it two way. So, what does two way mean? If I have this user A, it's like you know user one. B is user two. So if I say A, add a friend to it, like this. Then after this, then A dot friends dot count will be what? one but b dot friends dot count is still zero so it's very important to understand you know uh, they're both like you know new people understand the one-way thing so do we want it to be two ways how do you say well let's let's be friends maybe that's useful right because after I add you so one way is to create a method in here. Maybe, you know, add friend or something like that, right? But then you say, maybe you say, you know, make up here, right? Make friend. Uh, add friend. The naming in Ruby, it's very clear, but it can be really, uh, in this case, I don't like the name in here, right? So I add some user as friend. I can write something like this. So I, ha I should probably prevent people from using this friends push. But I tell people, hey, let's use my add friend function. How do you implement, implement this add friends? Self dot friends, add some user to it, right? And then you also do some user dot friends, add myself to it if you want and keep it two way that way some people try to be clever and they say no uh, you know I just need to I can find friends by let's say this is option one okay let's say option two is getting has you know all friends something like that two way friends and then you like Oh, I'm gonna use 
um, you know, I, I will find all the friendship where either the user ID is my ID, okay, or this is where, right? Where user ID is my ID or friend ID is my ID and then in this case I pass in ID ID this one's okay right you guys know the key value syntax but sometimes it's a lot more convenient to write SQL like statement with a question mark and then pass in the value this way so this is friendship though after this friendship it gives you the the friendship ID right so how can we these are all the friendships I have that either you friend me or I friend you how can you return how can you return all the friends so technically this is what I do right uh, user ID uh, as myself and I map all the each friendship I get their friend and I also need to add with all the friendship where friend ID and I am map user so not has here but you know I find all my friends I'm only showing you this just you know as how we brainstorm the model uh, with the back end does this one make sense I get the friendship that comes from me and I find those people yeah and then I get the friendship that is towards me and then I find those people who friend me if you really, really need to display them somehow right sometimes it's better to to achieve um, achieve it as all friendships like this and then you can do define all friends as all friendships up here is all friendships then what well this this is actually all the user I have the map already so sorry I'm just being super confusing here all friends I don't wanna merge them it's, it's too crazy alright so if you have two ways like this to detect if A is my friend or not the option one way is just to say if friends include right so how to check if how to check if um, someone is is my friend or not up here how do you do it friends dot include some user does that make sense how do you do it down here how do you do its friend some user uh-huh all friends what yeah so I prefer option one very clear and maybe in some cases you just you know use it up friends and then do the other ones but if you want that's how you think about the option two okay so let's look at two two popular guides um, one is the rails cast one uh, right and another one is the rails tutorial sorry I should have loaded these pages before Come on. Totally forgot to close the super crazy page over there. Okay. Um, so you you guys see now Rails cast still contain pretty good short tutorial on very common uh, usage 
But when you see them use things like nifty scaffold and all of that, just ignore it. Don't even try to use it. Just try to understand the structure here, right? Because otherwise you will spend more time debugging. Uh, so this is how you build a friendship and stuff. So most of you probably have seen this. Do, does anyone have uh, questions on this method? Who used this method? Raise your hands. Who used friend, is, friend underscore ID as a, as a list? Raise your hand. One, I, need, I think there's another one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, what's your question? Yeah, and then... Okay, the question, this inverse friendship is when uh, your, and if you look at my quip doctors now, that's exactly this, right? And then you add the two together. So it's nice to define it. Unfortunately, there's no good words for it. It's called inverse friendship. You see, uh, okay, so it's your question here, like, you don't know how it works or... Oh, it's quite simple. It's very similar, right? Because this is self-referential, referential, like this is user, this is user, and there's a table in between, right? So we have, already we have friendships. That's clear, right? The table is friendships. So you have has many friendships. Where's the friendship table? Uh, and then from that, you can do has many friends, through friendships. Before you can have inverse friends, you have to define inverse friendship even though you may not use it. So let's see how it defines. I say I have many inverse friendships, so this table name, Rails has no idea what table you want from because it cannot find the table inverse friendship, right? So what do you do? You have to say class name. And I'm saying, ah, you give me friendship class name, so now I know. I will look into the friendships table. Make sense? But when you look into the friendship table, it will look for what foreign key? It will look for user underscore ID key. Because user has many inverse friendship. But then you're like, no, no, no. It's there, but it's wrong. Don't look at that key. Look at the friend ID key. That's why you need to pass in foreign key. Right? Up here has many friendships. The same, but Rails is smart enough. Convention over configuration, right? You give me friendships, it means I knew has many friendships, I will go to the friendships table. But who has many friendships? Users. So I will do user underscore ID and I will find the, the column in there. That one makes sense? Okay. Sometimes if you build an app like a Twitter app, uh, then I think the term is called Followers. Who here does followers in your app? No. This thing is pretty confusing. So I'm going to click here and uh, hopefully we can get there when this page opens. It's so slow. It's All right. Follower, yeah, so it's follower and following. Followings is the same as friendship remember right but it's it's one way so the idea is that you can follow when you follow people then you can see their updates right oh my god someone's been trying to call me uh, like 10 times I'm not sure what's going on uh, and when you're following someone then you get right when you're following someone means you get their updates you can on the timeline, but when someone follows you, then your public update will go to their uh, profile. How do we implement it? Facebook converted from the old, you know, friend thing to uh, follow now. So here, instead of user underscore ID and friend ID, they use follower and followed, right? So that seems almost the same, but you can see the 
has many things here. It makes sense, right? Well, no, in this case, this is they showing you a very simple way, which is what if you call and put name and email in here and then it doesn't work. So then they say, right, uh, let's find this. All right, so this is how you implement, similar to friendship, remember the friendship stuff. A user, right, and then a user. So now user can have this relationship. So follower is user ID over there and followed I. ID is friend ID. Seems the same. Any question about this chart? You only need to store these two columns. However, it says active relationships. Maybe you can call it following table. Right? Uh, you can also add more columns. Like maybe in this case, you can say is it active or inactive? Right? In this following, is it blocked or not? You can add more columns. Okay, then, okay, such a disaster with so many tabs. It's a bit tricky on, um, okay, this, this page is to take too long to, to write, I'll write over here. All right. User has many, in this case, you say followings. It's the same class. Follow in belongs to what? Belongs to follower, but does it know where to find it? No, right? So you say class name, user, belongs to follow, now it's called followed, right? Class name, user. So up here, what do you name it? As many followers through following and you just think can Rails guess my class name right it can because you know it will there's one more thing you still need to say foreign key right because it doesn't know what is the foreign key here this is quite crazy like that's why this follow thing I don't like it at all because you are having many followers, so if this should be your followed ID, right? Right? I have many fo followers, and then that, okay, then has many, what do you call this now? Has many followed? And what does that mean? Has many followed user? So what does it mean? It means the people I follow. Maybe I should name something like, People I follow. So much easier to read. Right? And then you have to pass in in there, but you know. So yeah, so that's why I want to point out this method I don't like it very much. So follow users through followings. But when you say through here, it will go in here and then find the followed user thing. Follow user underscore. So maybe then you have to go back here. The single version of this one. Yeah. Okay. Foreign. So be careful. Obviously, this stuff is confusing. So you write it, and then later you change something, and then it's all become hard. And maybe you have to start again, or write test, and then you don't have to touch start again. So that's why today we actually learn write test driven development. Sent. And receive messages is the easier one, right? Once you understand this user thing, that's why we de design this homework first. You un you do receive messages, send messages. I'm like, whoa, okay, different relationship, even with the same table. And then we add the user friendship thing, and it becomes a little bit harder, like this one. And then add keep adding block blocking people. One way is to uh, add the blocked. 
true or false in the following thing but I actually maybe I like to keep things clean you know maybe you can just implement a different type blocking and blocker right so you can have user ID and then blocked ID so then that way you can always check did I friend this person okay good then that one is always a friendship if you add blocked to friendship then every time you use any friendship you, you have to check in the view or somewhere or is it active or is not but maybe if you separate the logic as a different table here then you keep track of the block list separately and the friend list separately and only sometimes in the view you get the friends and you minus out the the block people and you can do that within you know the user model so just define the class for your user right has non you know has friends and then has like active friends okay any more question about the homework I think let's any any other questions about homework so like a scope yeah. Scope. You can. Uh, in general, always try to create the, uh, you know, the variables in the controller, and then in the view, you just use what the controller already prepares. If in your view, let's say you have a partial, okay, and this partial is being used a few times. But in the view, you actually reading the database, right? Means the controller runs, finish the action code is done. Now the action code is going to go and render the view. But because view lets you access um, the model stuff database, if you use that, it's a lot more, a lot slower. Some when Rails is not smart enough to cache for you. But if you load all your you know, users and post stuff in the controller, the logic is always there, right? You can start implementing ways to load objects faster because you know once you load all the objects, rendering, rendering the view will be fast, right? But if you keep in the view, you do something like user dot most popular five people, something like user dot where, then your, your views will just render very slowly and sometimes you don't know why and so over time it's just really bad so no right try to and it's really hard to debug uh, so try to always declare variables in controller and render in the view right if you use a partial if you use a partial you should not use instance variable always pass in local variable into the partial why it means your partial can only be used. Partial, the whole point is to be used, right? Your partial can only be used again if you give that partial all the variables it needs. Right? So you cannot accidentally use the partial with not enough data. You can move this partial to many places and you always pass the variables the partial need. If you have a bad habit, I have a partial called underscore user, and in there I have some instance variable from controller. When you move your password somewhere else, your code breaks and you actually don't know why it breaks. Sometimes you, you didn't know it breaks until your user go there and it breaks, right? Or sometimes when the user is active, it doesn't break. When the user is inactive it breaks so rails make it convenient for you to declare variables and then say and it renders something but if you start using partial don't use instant variables you go to the view pass the partial render partial name and then pass the instant variable into that partial you will you know right now it's, it's a little difficult to understand why that is just remember that it makes it so much easier for you to copy this line, render, render partial and move, go somewhere else. You just render in different places in the app. You always pass 
you know, no assumption, right? If the Pasha doesn't, the, doesn't know anything else, you always give it what it needs. Develop the habit to use explicit, right? Tell exactly what it needs. Um, so I will, when we do live coding, I'll try to do that as well so it will be clear. Okay. Let's take a couple of minutes break, get some water, and then we'll tackle the, uh, I'll talk about the group project, and then we we'll talk about the homework three uh, assignment. Um, yeah. Uh, in any way, I assess uh, JavaScript or variable. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Same thing. JavaScript. Well, that's funny. If you want Rails instance variable inside JavaScript, right? That's very common because Rails prepare everything first and then start rendering. And I can show you well, how JavaScript can get the variables from, from Rails. You can render in. HTML and ask JavaScript to load it, right? Correct. Now, your question is, can I get JavaScript variable inside Rails? What kind of variable do you need? Does that seem backward? It seems a little strange. What variable in JavaScript do you need to have in Rails? Your controller should never need to know the ID of the, you know, the view page, right? Your should controller should be the one who say, this is going to be your ID. Yeah. So if you have a, a, a particular example, I can explain, you should reverse the flow. The flow should be controller, talk to model and see whatever is needed. Model view controller, right? And then controller say, okay, I'm done. I have these things. View, render. Right? You shouldn't be like, oh, wait, 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 let me go back to the model and, and load some more things. And then controller is like, yeah, it's okay now, but two months later, things are going to break and, you know, it's quite slow. There are many other problems. Yeah, so that's not really MVC. 